Hi there, I'm Ludwig and this is SQL Bootcamp Online, the two-minute SQL series when I'm addressing the most common questions regarding SQL Server and Azure. So, today I want to continue the um, sequence where we talk about how to manage the SQL Server with PowerShell. But before we'll get to the PS providers and before we'll be able to truly connect to our SQL Server, we need to start with something a bit different. We need to start with the definition of what is the SQL Server instance and how does instance interact with the actual database because only after understanding the ins the concept of instances we will be able to uh, truly get the most out of the powershell uh, for sql so first of all whenever you are talking about sql server right so let's say that this is my windows machine this is my Windows machine here. And on that Windows machine, I'm installing the SQL server, right? So let's say that my SQL, uh, my Windows machine is called London, right? So again, just for the sake of, uh, uh, of an example, I do have the London machine here. As you can see, what I'm presenting in this little series, this is the very old machine. This is Windows Server 2012, so a decade old machine to prove that whatever kind of um, environment you are sitting in front of, everything that we talk about is still applicable. So there is this London Windows server, all right? Now on that Windows server, I am installing the SQL server, right? Now, when you're installing SQL server, you need to understand that you can uh, install multiple SQL servers on the very same server, right? On the very same Windows machine. Now, each one of those installations, they are being called, go, come back to my, uh, to my little beautiful drawing, each one of those instances, they'll be called, well, each, each one of those installs, they'll be called instances. The very first one will be a default instance. Now, when you want to connect to this instance, you'll just connect to the local host, you can just connect to the London server, and this is just like that. Let me just go back to my uh, to my screen sharing here and launch the SSMS real quick. Now, when you are launching SSMS, when you're launching your SQL Server Management Studio, in the very first step, you are being asked, where do you want to connect? And as you can see, you are being connected to the London server. So basically to the server that has the very same name as your Windows machine, all right? Because the very first instance that you will install on that Windows machine, the very first instance of your SQL Server will be called the very same way. Now, if you want to connect to those additional virtual machine, uh, to those additional instances, you will just provide it with the backslash and then uh, other instances, uh, instances name, whatever this instance name is, once you'll install it in here, right? So, by default, it will be called the very same way as your Windows Server, right? And this is extremely important for us to understand that the very first one is called the very same way as our server, and this will be a default instance. Now, those instances uh, are quite independent from uh, one another. I will record the separate video about this subject, so make sure you'll subscribe to this channel so you won't lose anything. But don't trust the YouTube algorithm. It would be way better for you to just go to... That's right, sqlbootcamp.online and I'll be uh, sending you the email the moment this video is done. But anyways, back to our back to our screen share. If I want to uh, connect to the SQL server using the PowerShell, I do have a separate tool for that. And the separate tool is called SQLPS. So this is an SQL or a PowerShell aimed at SQL uh, Server itself. As you can see, this is Microsoft SQL Server PowerShell, and it is being installed alongside with your SQL Server. So right now, what I need to do, I want just to uh, say LS, so I want to list whatever I have in here. Well, I do have my providers. I see my uh, data collections, my utilities, my uh, DAC, and I want to change my directory to SQL Server, right? This is what I'm interested in right now. Again, I'm just doing it step by step to see, to explore what's going on in here. Let me just uh, list whatever I have in the SQL Server um, scope right now. Well, I do have the London server, right? Let me just change the directory to that London 
server just like that. Let me list all of the instances. Boom, I do have my default instance. This is exactly why we talked about those, oh, here we go, those default instances in here right now, okay? So I want to change the directory to that default instance just like that. Let me list whatever I have in here and look what it's going on in here. I do see my credentials, I see my uh, uh, job servers, I see my linked servers, I see my logins, I see my roles. So basically these are quite similar to what you're having in here. Let me just log in to my London server through SSMS through what you're having in here, for example, in our security. I have my logins, I have my server roles, I have my credentials, right? So again, these are the very same things that I see in here. I see my logins, I have my SQL server uh, credential, uh, well, here we go, credentials. I see backup devices, all right? I do see my backup devices in here as well in the server objects boom, backup devices. I do see linked servers, as we just said before. Boom, the linked servers are also here, right? So these represents some of the folders that you're seeing in SSMS, right? So what I want to do is I want to go to my databases right now. So I'll just go to my databases, change directory to databases, boom. And let me list all of the databases that I see in here. Boom, AdventureWorks, AdventureWorks DW, DW 2008, uh, all the way down to report server temp DB. Boom, let me just expand my databases. ta -da, these are exactly the same databases that I've seen just a moment ago in my PowerShell. So how about those AdventureWorks database? Well, if I switch the directory to my AdventureWorks database, again, CD, uh, adventure works database let me list what do i have in here well quite a lot of things i do have roles rules schemas synonyms tables users views basically everything that you will find here in our ssms in tables boom in storage boom in security boom all of those things are also accessible through our SQL, um, SQL PS, all right? So I'll just go to my tables. And the last step that I want to do is I want to list all of the tables that I have in here. Again, you can see that each and every one of those tables that I will be seeing in my AdventureWorks database is also listed in here. So again, to my tables, ta -da, from AW build version and error log all the way down to the sales store contact. Let me just verify that. The DBO AW build version through error log all the way down to sales store contact. So as you can see, by just using a simplest solution ever, which is basically this, running the SQL PS command, you are able to just go and start exploring your SQL Server using PowerShell without having access to SSMS, without having access to GUI. You can use PowerShell to start exploring what's going on in there in your SQL Server. Now, invoking SQL commands and running those commands, running those scripts that you may have installed in different locations. This is the different story and we will of course cover it in this um, channel. So make sure that you're subscribed, make sure that you'll go to SQL Bootcamp Online to sign up for our mailing list where I'll just send you a quick email once that video will be ready. So again, I'm Ludwig. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next episode on SQL Bootcamp Online.